Uh, now we have Matthias and Sergiusz uh, to talk about Kubernetes Matrix API. All right, thanks. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, hi, I'm Sergiusz. Uh, by the way, can you hear me? Works? Okay, cool, great. Uh, I'm Sergiusz, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. Uh, traditionally, I come from the Kubernetes ecosystem, all things uh, around that topic, and now I'm working on all things Prometheus inside Kubernetes at Red Hat, together with Matthias. <laughs> so, hi, I'm, I'm Matthias. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat as well. Um, do all kinds of, like, go Kubernetes Prometheus as well. Um, and I also organized the uh, Prometheus Berlin meetup, so if you ever happen to be in Berlin, we might as well have a Prometheus meetup. Um, so this is the agenda. Uh, while you're reading this, uh, please give a quick hands of who uses Kubernetes. All right, who uses Prometheus? All right, same amount. So you all should be users of basically who uses what the we Prometheus are. Prometheus adapter. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Good. No, okay, good. so maybe you don't know yet. Um, so yeah, this is the agenda. Quickly going through the history. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, we don't have much time, so let's get going. Uh, so the uh, history of uh, Kubernetes metrics um, was kind of rough in the beginning. Um, it was simply hard-coded into uh, Kubernetes. Um, it started with uh, CPU and memory metrics uh, for each part and, and node. Um, and this was basically the architecture. So we had Heapster in the middle, and it would uh, go to the kubelet and uh, see advisor and get the metrics from there and then uh, put it in some storage backend, which wasn't really uh, like um, decoupled from Heapster. So Heapster had like a lot of like, I don't know if it's like feature creep in, in a way. Um, so yeah, these are the problems, and it was a push-based model. Um, as I said, it had like the vendor dumps, uh, opinionated tooling, no abstraction, and what about like Prometheus, right? So we want to like use Prometheus, so where is it? Um, so these were the goals for uh, refactoring this, uh, trying to uh, decouple it and introduce an abstract uh, API schema so that we can actually use Prometheus or maybe something else um, even if we want to. Um, so meet the metrics APIs inside Kubernetes. We have the resource metrics, which are CPU and memory, so what you're already familiar with and what actually was in Kubernetes right from the beginning. Um, and then we have now custom metrics, which are metrics that you can define to be bound to a Kubernetes object. So for example, to a pod or a deployment, to a job, something like that. And then we have uh, external metrics, External metrics are simply something coming from your cloud pro provider, for example, which are not really tied to anything uh, Prometheus-specific, and we can still leverage those inside of Kubernetes. Um, so this is the architecture. We have the API server at the very top, um, kubectl, HPA, which is the horizontal pod autoscaler, and the schedule, scheduler will talk to that API. And um, in our case, we have the Kubernetes Prometheus adapter running, and this will actually, which uh, Sergej will explain, um, transform the API calls coming to Kubernetes into something that uh, Prometheus understands so that we can use the both uh, together. Um, yep. So there are kind of like these example implementations uh, for the metrics APIs. Um, something that is often shipped with uh, Kubernetes, so to say, by default is the metric server, and this has only like the resource, like CPU and uh, memory metrics implemented, and we are going to take a look at deeper uh, into the Prometheus adapter. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's the uh, external metrics are work in progress, um, but it also has the custom metrics already. So, going into detail now. Okay, cool. So resource metrics. As you learned, we have three metrics, or hopefully three orthogonal metrics APIs inside Kubernetes. And I just might take a step back here to this slide because I really like that one. Uh, the important message of this slide is that from Prometheus Adapter is not the only provider of custom metrics. You can actually mix and match those implementations. You can use the Prometheus Adapter to host your custom metrics, whereas still taking your old metrics server to host resource metrics. Or you could use the Prometheus adapter to host resource metric, uh, metrics inside your cluster, but a totally different adapter uh, hosting custom metrics for your provider at will. 
and two like implementations that we also enlisted here are for Azure um, and Stackdriver. I'm not sure if there exists one for AWS. Uh, I simply didn't, oh, we simply didn't find it on Google. That's why it's not in the, uh, in the slide probably. So it's important for you, you can mix and match those things per API group, namely per research, like per metrics, KHS, IO, custom metrics, and then still metrics. You are not married to the Prometheus adapter at all. So resource metrics, the first API of those three, how do we actually first find out if our um, cluster is able to support that? There is a API services object inside a Kubernetes which you can query, um, and if you ask a kubecut and get API services metrics, KSIO, it will tell you if the thing is available uh, or not. And the thing becomes available if you deploy the Prometheus adapter and register it as a so-called API service. Resource metrics have two well-defined metrics, as you learned. One is all about nodes, and the other is all about pods. Node metrics are obviously not namespaced. Nodes are ubiquitous across the whole cluster, and pods obviously are um, deployed uh, on a namespace um, basis. So those two first-class resource objects are available inside Kubernetes, and you can query them the same way you query any other object inside Kubernetes as you would say, I don't know, kubectl will get deployments, kubectl will get pods or whatnot. You can do kubectl will get pods dot metrics dot KSIO, and it will list all available resource metrics um, inside your cluster. In this example, we simply enlisted um, the Grafana resource metrics and you will get an output like this, which should be very familiar for any other Kubernetes object. So now the question is, you know, what you see here is we, we queried resource metrics for Grafana. We get the output. We have two containers. One is named Grafana. The other, other one is unnamed. Uh, one is occupying 10 millis of CPU and some memory. How do these metrics get into there by the help of the Prometheus adapter? Um, obviously, oh, sorry, before I go to the other slide, this is the, probably the command that some of you know, uh, the kubectl top part. Under the hood, it does exactly the same what I just did manually with the uh, kubectl get um, metrics for the parts. Uh, the configuration for the Prometheus adapter is pretty straightforward. It's a simple little, um, config map inside Kubernetes, um, and it follows a, a pretty simple structure, at least for the resource metrics. And as you can imagine, when you do a kubectl top part, at the end of the day, there must be some Prometheus tree being executed. And that's all what the config map is about. So when you specify this configuration, you can specify rules for retrieving resource metrics. So one is for querying um, CPU metrics per container, and that's essentially like a very simple rate-based query against Prometheus, and the other one specifies the query for executing um, um, or for retrieving metrics regarding nodes. As you can see, all of this is totally configurable. When you deploy the Prometheus adapter that is shipped inside the repository, we come like a, with a predefined uh, query for you, but you can all tweak this by yourself. And uh, we have a pretty simple um, Go template-based system where all the sort of like parameters to instrument that query will be dependency injected for you. So the query is being executed. Some metrics are being retrieved from Prometheus. So how you know, does the connection now go on when you, you get a metric series back with values and the actual object inside the Kubernetes world? So the other section inside that configuration is called resources. And that's because we want to associate some label names that come back from Prometheus with the Kubernetes resource objects that we are querying against. In the case of resource metrics, these are either nodes or parts. So what you will see here is like a simple map-based representation. Um, this is what, what I call the overrides configuration when a label name called node is present inside the metric, we will map it one-to-one -to, -one to the Kubernetes resource node. So, and this resource name node comes from the verbs that you are used to when you execute kubectl commands. So we could equally write in there nodes, the pluralization form, the Prometheus adapter behind the scenes will uh, normalize this. So for the node and namespace name um, labels, these map one and one with the resource names from Kubernetes. One exception, and I know there is some dangling pull request out there, or at least some effort there to normalize this in C-Advisor, 
C-Advisor, unfortunately, exposes metrics regarding parts with the part underscore name label, so we have to map, map this to the resource type part manually. All of this is also configurable, so if you have some more um, other label names which sort of like do not have a perfect per impedance match with the Kubernetes world, you can configure this here via overrides. Another thing, the metrics, of obviously you saw we have per container metrics, so you also have to provide um, the mapping, what the label is all about, um, which specifies container metrics. And that's the last part for, for resource metrics configuration. Um, I specified this query here, as you remember, container CPU usage seconds total. So one little hint for you to sort of like debug or like find out or discover yourself how these metrics look like. In the Prometheus um, server, there is one nifty API call, API v1 series, which you can give it a selector, and it will give, a lot, give you back like metadata about the metric series. And question, who did know this API call before? Okay, that's cool. Just remind this yourself, this is very nice for debugging and finding out about like the structure of the metrics um, that are present inside your Prometheus, right? For instance, you, you will get back all the label names um, that come back here. So and as, you, as you may remember from the previous slide, we have the label name container name, which we will associate with the container at hand. We have the label name namespace pod and pod name, which we associated with the corresponding resource names from Kubernetes using the overrides um, configuration. Um, same goes for memory. Same principle applies here. As you learned, we have CPU and memory metrics for resource metrics. Same stuff, no magic. Uh, instead of uh, having some CPU metric here, we are invoking a sum of container memory working set bytes from C Advisor. And one little bit, you have to tell the Prometheus adapter the window because that's what the Kubernetes also uh, API expects, the window you took the measurements from, and these must correspond um, to the window that you specified in the rate function. So take care that you uh, match those two guys. Custom metrics. Resource metrics has been quite easy, but custom metrics are a little bit of a different beast. Resource metrics are predefined in the Kubernetes API. Custom metrics is something that you totally define yourself. So you can invent totally custom metrics, and based upon these metrics, you can instrument the horizontal pod autoscaler, for instance, to scale up your pods. So the process here, unfortunately, is not that easy. Custom metrics API is always, as Matthias mentioned, bound to a very concrete Kubernetes type or Kubernetes resource, pods, services, jobs, ingress objects, whatever is present inside, inside your cluster. Um, same thing as above, you find out if custom metrics are enabled by calling get API services, um, v1 beta 1 custom metrics, ksio, and see if it's available. Unfortunately, since the metrics that come from um, the custom metrics world are not first class Kubernetes resource types, it's not that easy to query them as like kubectl get parts.metrics. Uh, fortunately, there is a raw command which lets you explore the Kubernetes API internally. And if you do kubectl get raw slash APIs custom metrics state SIO, it will list you like um, all the available custom metrics inside your cluster which are out to discovered. In this case, what I prepared here for you, um, canonical example, requests per second uh, metric that I configured inside my cluster, and you will get a nice JSON rep 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 representation of this one. So exactly the same question as above, how does this metric get there? And the Prometheus adapter um, has like a four-step process to accomplish this. First one is it has a method of discovering the metrics inside your Prometheus, all configurable, and you will learn how to accomplish that. Then second step, as before, once we found out about our metrics, we have to associate them uh, with the Kubernetes resource types. Then we need to provide some naming on, so, uh, on of those metrics inside our cluster. These names may vary. For instance, if you apply the rate function, um, the name HTTP requests per second, uh, HTTP requests total doesn't make any sense because the rate function is a per second function, or is a, the result of that is a per second value. So you may want to apply the per second suffix to that metric name. So you want to configure that. And finally, as before, you want some way of configuring um, the actual query of those custom metrics against Prometheus. Again. 
config mac as before. Instead of resource rules, you specify the section rules. And in order to discover the metrics, what you set up here is a so-called series query. So, and this series query will be executed against the very same API endpoint of Prometheus that I showed you before. And I recommend you to, because that's what we've been struggling with, right? What, what is the selector? What metrics are actually being re returned when I configure this beast here? Uh, when you take this HTTP requests total, namespace is not empty, and stitch it into this um, series API discovery endpoint of Prometheus, you will get a nice list of, of metrics that will be fetched from, from the Prometheus uh, adapter. In this case, HTTP requests total, and in the selector, we specified namespace uh, to be not empty in the hope that these metrics are somehow related to Kubernetes, right? And it depends upon you to specify those selectors um, as explicit as possible in order not to have false positive and fetch metrics which don't have to do anything with Kubernetes at all. Second point, association. And again, we have the resources section. In the previous example, you learned about the so-called overrides configuration. The second method of configuring this association between label names and resource names is a very simple template. So what we did here is uh, we said dot resource, uh, and what, would, what we simply assume is that the label name equals one and one with the Kubernetes resource name that is present inside your cluster. So you have both possibilities to configure those resource associations, and you can mix and match both in the, inside this configuration. So again, example as before, and here you will actually see a nice false positive. Uh, the namespace label name will be associated with namespace objects, pod with pods, service with service, and the job actually is a false positive here, right? So therefore, we um, very often specify those overrides directly um, to do these associations because it's not always obvious if all those labels name, label names really refer to Kubernetes objects. Second name, naming. Um, second thing, na uh, third thing, naming. So once you have um, your metric HTTP request total, you, uh, you probably want to apply a rate function to it, so we must change the name that is exposed inside Kubernetes. And here we have a very simple um, regex-based approach. And in this case, we just simply here group here the prefix underscore total, take the group one and append per second. So you have, you have quite some flexibility here to do this conversion of, of names, right? So HTTP request total becomes HTTP request total second. Final thing, once you have everything in place, you found out about your, your metrics, you associated them with Kubernetes resource um, objects, and you converted your names, you actually want to specify the actual query. So in this case, we simply have a, uh, a rate-based query, which we execute against it with, again, some Go templating mechanism. In order to get a very concrete um, metrics value of custom metrics, again, we, we, we don't have such a nice way as with resource metrics. You can execute this kubectl get raw command with the endpoint custom metrics, kdsio, for instance, in this case, namespaces, some namespace, and then some part, um, and then a slash, and the metric name in, that you specified in the Kubernetes world. And if everything works out nicely, uh, you have a value that finally comes from Prometheus. And just as a, as a proof, you know, we have here, um, I, in my test setup, I was simply um, executing five requests per second against the pod info um, pod. And when you take this query that we configured in the, uh, in the very last step of the configuration, it should be at the very same value. So I recommend if you do configure the Prometheus adapter, do these kinds of sanity checks to see if, if the queries execute correctly, if the metrics are being discovered correctly. So... Um, this is a nice way to, uh, to check this out. Future. As you see, this is quite an elaborate configuration setup, and we spent some time, we work at Red Hat, uh, and also to configure it correctly for our own purposes. Actually, that was the motivation for this talk, because we were sometimes confused by our own tools. Um, and we actually want to improve things on the Prometheus adapter side. So, um, first of all, there is a very nice pull request by the community out there to add external metric support. Um, Currently, it is hosted uh, under the um, 
the username of Solly Ross, right, who has been initially working uh, uh, on the tool. We would like to move it to the Kubernetes organization. Obviously, hopefully, a year from now, I won't need to spend so much time on explaining the configuration of the Prometheus adapter anymore. We want to tackle this quite complex configuration. Um, and obviously, you know, since this is a pretty abstract discovery mechanism, we recognize some scalability issues with, uh, uh, with, with the current approach. So we would like to tackle the current issues with that one. So we do plan a pretty beefy refactoring of, um, of the adapter itself in, in, in the future. Nevertheless, for resource metrics, we do feel that it's quite stable to be used as of today. Um, for custom metrics, hopefully you learned how to do the mapping yourself so you can actually use it as of today too. Um, maybe the recommendation would be write rigid uh, selectors um, so re you reduce the amount of metrics exposed inside the Kubernetes cluster. Um, finally, HPA configuration once, and that we will just spend one slide on it because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, once you have m your metrics ready and exposed, you obviously can use them as any other metric inside the um, horizontal pod autoscaler uh, configuration. Uh, and in this case here, I simply um, um, scaled this pod info part to uh, based on the target average value of one request per second per part. So um, that's about it. Um, yeah, you want to know? Yeah. Okay. So uh, if you want to get uh, into running the Prometheus adapter and use all of this, what we just explained, the easiest is probably to use uh, QPrometheus, which is inside the Prometheus operator repository. Uh, we ship uh, Prometheus adapter pre-configured for resource metrics. Uh, you still have to do some manual work due to the limitations we were just talking about uh, for custom metrics. And you can uh, also check out the custom metric examples uh, in the uh, Prometheus adapter uh, repository. Um, yeah, so for getting started, just go and kubectl apply the manifests in kubeprometheus. Oh, and uh, for the custom metrics, <laughs> there, is, uh, there is a deploy subdirectory inside the Kubernetes Prometheus adapter upstream repository itself. Yeah. If you want to play around with that, um, but again, your millage may vary. You may mix. You may want also want to mix and match different uh, adapter implementations uh, depending on your environment. So yeah, how to get involved? Because this is first time. Um, if you want to get involved, we have um, SIG instrumentation and SIG autoscaling, uh, which are the uh, special interest groups in Kubernetes, and uh, especially the Prometheus adapter is part of SIG instrumentation, um, and we have like for both. Uh, be weekly. I'm not sure. Autoscaling has like three, uh, three weekly meetings sometimes, um, and there's also a mailing list. Um, but you can also go into Kubernetes Slack and ask questions uh, about these topics. So yeah, I think that's it. If you have any questions, feel free. Um, and we are going to stick around afterwards as well. Questions. Cool. Awesome. As you head out, if you find any trash, please put it in the bins <laughs> there. Oh, we have a question. Oh, one question. Shh. Uh, yeah. Hi, thanks. But my question is not related to this, uh, because you are, uh, I'm interested in the Go Pass. Are you using this uh, on production? Go Pass? Go Pass. You are mentioning one of the creators yeah. of Go Pass. Uh, yeah, I'm using it on a daily basis, and I know, like, I don't know, like, 20 people that use it too. So, oh. but we can discuss it afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Does it have an ad metrics endpoint? Uh, not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. More questions? Thanks, folks. <laughs>